Look at Andre. He's using a cake cooling rack on top of a gas burner. That's creativity. Today, I am making a Japanese-inspired grilled platter. I'm incorporating fire by making a fire pit next to my plate. I love the smokiness of cooking over a fire. I'm making beef, ribeye, red miso sauce, a cauliflower sesame oil puree, and a ponzu marinated charred eggplant. I'm making my dad's birthday scallops, pork belly with uh, rum and cola glaze. It wouldn't be my dad's birthday if he didn't have a rum and cola in hand. For the fire element, I have a smoked pork fat and maple birthday candle. I really wanted to create that smell of like bacony fat hitting the grill, but it also melts away into extra sauce on your plate to dip stuff in. 15 minutes! You only have 15 minutes left. Look at that. Jennifer has got liquid nitrogen in her station. For the ice elements, I'm making dulse ice cream pearls with liquid nitrogen. All right. Dulse is this really yummy, savory snack. It's a kind of seaweed. I'm taking dulse powder and whisking that into some cornstarch slurry and hot milk and start adding liquid nitrogen. And one minute later, I have ice cream pearls. I have a lot going on today. There's no shortage of things that could go sideways. This energy, I mean, it's so intense in here. These are the make and break moments when you're putting your plate together in the last minute. I'm just sweating so much. It feels like I'm training like an Olympic athlete right now. These last couple elements are really going to be the wow of my dish, so it's go big or go home. I'm having a smoke effect going, a smoking puck giving off a, a continuous stream of smoke around the plate. I plate my dulse ice cream pearls, and then I light the candle so it can melt down a little bit and have a bit of sauce on the plate. Artistically, I'm creating the look of a fire pit. I want flames. Loves the creativity. I was wondering what the ice component would be. I think it's coming right now. I want sprinkles and sprinkles of shiso leaves shattered all over the entire plate. This is my only ice component, and it has to work. My ice element is very risky. It's my vinaigrette in a balloon. I'm gonna freeze it with liquid nitrogen so that it forms a nice cup and it's frozen on the outside but still liquidy on the inside. Wow, look at that, it looks amazing. It's like a little red egg in a nest. With ice cream pearls, I'm also going to make hazelnut snow. I'm mixing hazelnut oil with maltodextrin and put it in some liquid nitrogen. I want it to melt like actual snow, like when you get snow on your tongue and then it's just gone. 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, and up! Wow. <laughs> so nervous for them. Hey, man. Andre, can you please bring up your dish? I would call this steak by the fire. Sake marinated ribeye with ponzu marinated eggplant and sesame cauliflower puree. The presentation looks spectacular. The ice element was very theatrical. Let's see how it all goes together. Very tasty, very savory, beautiful cooked ribeye, lovely medium rare, and the flavor of that shiso leaf is unmistakable. Thank you, chef. A dish that was well executed, well thought out, extraordinarily well presented. And what it says is how far you've come. Wow. Thank you, Chef. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I have to say I love the choreography yeah. with the, the shiso leaf. Thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. So many textures come through. I love those Japanese flavors. I've spent a lot of time there skating and touring, and this dish feels like a home away from home. Well done. Thank you very much. Andre, you've gone a long way in terms of presentation. I see perfect symmetry. The matches of color, the white, the red, the green, the black, very, very zen. I'm gonna try the amami. So this has been charred. I thought that that's a interesting way to do it instead of just steaming it. Wow, by charring it instead of boiling it, okay, you retain that sweetness. And that char just gives it the extra smoky the flavor. flavor. Go on fire. Don't let the ice cool you down. Thank you, chef. To have an Olympic gold medalist in awe over my dish. I'm just so proud of what I did. Jennifer, please bring your dish up. 
This dish was to honor my dad. I've made scallops, some pork belly, a dulse ice cream pearl, a birthday candle made out of smoked pork fat. My dad's favorite drink was rum and cola, so I made a rum and cola glaze, and that's brushed on the pork belly. I definitely see the fire and the ice. I got that warm feeling, that sweetness coming from that scallop complements the pork belly perfectly. This sense of togetherness, of flavors from the earth, flavors from the sea, flavors coming together. Well, did your dad know that you're a great cook? Um, no, chef, it's kind of something that I got interested in, um, but I think I kind of caught the bug from him. He was just really multi-passionate and loved really good food. My father also passed away way before I was a cook, and we share some moment that we wish he was here, and somehow, I'm sure he is. Thank you, Chef. I almost don't want to dive in because it's so beautiful. No, please, wreck it. Just go. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so flavorful and beautiful, but I, what I love is that you can tell it's made with love. I mean, you Mayo timers are just the best. <laughs> I always feel like you can knock on anyone's door out east and they would welcome you in for a, a lovely meal, maybe not quite at this elaborate. Thanks so much. Very intrigued by this. It looks like a candy that's been just wrapped in some tin foil, but I know it's more than that. This is a dulce ice cream pearl. Beautiful flavor. That seaweed really comes through. I've never had an ice cream made with seaweed. You have talent to burn. Thank you so much, Chef. To impress the judges and gold medal Olympian. Feels like such a gift. Josh, please bring your dish up to the front. After listening to the critiques of the other two cooks, they were wow dishes. So I'm kind of nervous, you know, I'm really hoping that this dish is up to that standard. This chef is what I call prairie smoke. You know, when I think of fire and ice, I think of Saskatchewan, right? It gets minus 60 in the winter and plus 40 in the summer. So I have uh, a duck breast that I pan seared and cooked uh, and then smoked as it was resting. I made um, some wild rice savoy cabbage rolls. And on top, I have a lightly dressed frisée salad and also a sour cherry vinaigrette. You've cooked it rather nicely. Beautiful, medium rare. It could have maybe done with a little bit more color on the, on the fat side. But is duck something you cook a lot with? Uh, honestly, Chef, this is the first time I ever cooked duck. The cook on the duck is really terrific, nicely seasoned. That accompanied with that cherry sauce that has a little bit of a sweet and sour edge. Great idea, great concept. And the aromas of that smoke, it's, it's campfire, it's, it's cooking over an open hearth, it's soulful. Josh, well done. This presentation, it's so layered and colorful, and it felt like an ambitious plan. I admire that risk, because at this point in the competition, you just can't play it safe. That vinaigrette, so good. Just a delightful, delightful dish. Well Thank done. you very much. Josh, I did not expect this from you. <laughs> it's incredibly creative. I love the flavors that you've captured in this cabbage roll. They're very earthy. You can see you have a real respect for tradition, but you also took a risk. You added wild rice to it, the walnut cream. Perfectly executed. Home run. Thanks, Chef. I really think this one hit the mark of everything. It was creative and innovative, and Tessa Virtue tasting it, and, and her also saying how good it tastes, um, it just makes you feel great inside. Oh my god. As you can see, Andre will be cooking alongside you in this challenge. But as part of his advantage, he assigned both of you a luxury Canadian cheese. Strategy is very important. I don't want to give them something they're comfortable with. Josh is getting the blue cheese because it's so strong. I think he'll have a difficult time pairing things with it. With Jennifer, her brain is always ticking. Cheddar is one of the easier ones, and I feel like she might overcomplicate it and lose the whole point of the challenge. We're asking these home cooks to come up with three preparations of one cheese. That is not easy. You really have to understand all the flavor profiles within that cheese. Making one dish with blue cheese, 
incredibly hard. Making three, it's like climbing a mountain. And it's interesting, with cheese, like wine, it picks up the flavors of the region from which it is made. This cheese is unreal. Avonlea cheese is wrapped and then aged in the ground in PEI, so the minerals from the soil actually work their way in there. It smells like potatoes and also tastes like potatoes. For the first dish, I was thinking kind of like chips and dip. That's what the potatoes made me think of. So I'm making gorgiers. Gorgiers are like a savory cream puff. And then I have an idea, like broccoli and cheese, man. It's like so classic. So crispy cheddar and broccoli. And then I'm just going to finish it off with a tart tatin. So to make a tart tatin, you put apples into a good hot cast iron pan with butter and sugar and let them caramelize. Then the pastry crust goes on top and then into the oven for it to finish off baking. All oh, right. So, Josh, do you think Andre threw you a curveball with the blue cheese? Definitely, but I'm ready to show him that the curveball is just going to turn into a home run. Tell me, what are you making? I'm doing kind of a riff on the blue cheese dip that you would get for buffalo chicken wings. You know, that celery blue cheese kind of flavor. I'm going to turn that into a soup today. Blue cheese soup? Yeah. And then second, I'm going to do a butternut squash and blue cheese ravioli. And then for dessert, uh, I'm going all out with a blue cheese cheesecake with a honey fig and ginger combo. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit concerned that you right now are biting off a little more than you can chew. I'll show you, chef. You know, I'm definitely the hardest worker in the room. Good luck. <laughs> Lots of time. Tons of time. For the broccoli and cheese, I have put in butter, breadcrumbs, and a whole bunch of the cheddar. And on top of that, I layer the broccolini. I actually think the broccoli and cheese dish is the weakest link in Jennifer's lineup of three dishes. Doesn't sound like it's ambitious enough. This dish is like so simple, but I want to do something really kind of classic, but do it really, really well. I can smell the cheddar, um, so that's caramelizing. Five minutes, only five minutes left. For the tart tartan, I've added a bit of cheddar to my crust. It has like a nice brown on it. I feel hopeful. Getting the tartan out of the mold can be quite tricky. That caramel is so thick it can quite easily stick to the pan. When I've made tart at home, I've never had like a perfect execution. It feels promising. Jennifer is just about to flip her tart to 10. It's the moment of truth right here. Ooh, okay. Oh, some of the apples are actually sticking to the bottom of her pan. <sighs> I just want to fix this as fast as I can. Get going, get going! Josh hasn't even started plating. This is gonna be so close. What am I missing? Come on, let's go, let's go! Ah. Holy heck. That's good, that's good. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I've made cheddar gougeres, and I've made a crispy cheddar broccoli with some bacon, and a tart tatin with a cheddar pastry. Jennifer, you love cheese, don't you? <laughs> that is true, chef. I like the concept. You took simple things, and you added cheese to it. And this is the take, I guess, on cheese and broccoli, right? Yes, chef. Cook is perfect. You get that sweetness coming from the broccoli, and then you get that sharp hit from the cheese itself. You got the balance of flavor, the seasoning, it's right. Well done. Thank you, Chef. I get to try your apple tatine. Let's see how this tatine cuts. That's a good sound. What I see is a nice, light golden color on that pastry. is very, very good. That apple has become so molten and soft, and there's enough of that savory cheese element that adds just a touch of saltiness to it. This is an excellent rendition of a classic French tatine. Thank you, chef. So tell me about these gougeres. I was trying to capture some of that potato-y flavor near the rind, so it's in the batter. And then I think chips are always best with dip, so it's just some spicy honey and uh, some grapes and pine nuts. The 
question here is, is there enough beautiful cheddar in your Gougeres? What do you think? I think so, chef. I'm not too sure you really nailed it. But technically, these are very textbook. They're airy, they're light. Mm -hmm. I just want more of that cheese. Okay. I think I managed to show off this blue cheese in, in a way that was creative. I'm really hoping that it shows the judges how far that I've come in this competition. So Andre chose for you the tiger blue. He did. You got three elements on the plate. The first one is a, my take on a blue cheese dip. It's a soup with uh, celery and then added some blue cheese in there. Next, I have a butternut squash and blue cheese deep fried ravioli. The last one is blue cheese with creme fraiche cheesecake with a ginger simple syrup. Interesting approach. I'm gonna try the soup. The soup, you say, is a celery base which is a challenging ingredient to make a soup from. Just because there's a lot of water content to it, I find the thickness of the soup to be on the thinner side. I think you could have sweated down some onions, added more of the celery, and then blitzed everything just to give it some viscosity, some thickness. Although the cheese has a really nice note. There's no doubt there's blue cheese in there. Josh, thank you. Okay. Walk me through how you made this ravioli. The filling is a roasted butternut squash, nutmeg, and a little blue cheese. And then I deep fried it, drizzled it with honey, and a yogurt and blue cheese sage cream underneath. I like the flavors inside the ravioli. A little more of that blue cheese inside would have helped it to really pop and honor the tiger blue, which was what this challenge was all about. However, I was very concerned when I saw that you were trying to pull off a soup, a ravioli, and a cheesecake. So I really give you props for pulling this off. You made a cheesecake many times, right? Uh, I've only made one no-bake one at home. I've definitely never made a blue cheese cheesecake, for sure. OK. You got a nice cross hair. It's not too thick. It's very uniform. Can't wait to sink my teeth into this. It's very good. I definitely get the blue cheese, which is very important because that's what you're paying homage to. This is very smooth and it's not grainy. Very good job. Thank you, Chef. You know, there was a couple of little things that I uh, definitely could have done better, but I'm just hoping that this dish gets me to the finale. I am making fancy ants on a log. A traditional ants on a log is you take a log of celery, you fill it with peanut butter, and then top it with raisins. It's a fun way to eat some vegetables. <laughs> growing up. This was a snack that I had in my school lunch, and I just didn't think there was anything cooler than ants on a log. Jennifer. Hello, chef. Ants on a log. So how are you going to make it great? This version is with blue cheese, a celery juice vinaigrette, and pork poached eggs. I really want it to look like a bit of a sculptural art piece that you get to eat. Okay, well, you have always inspired us and impressed us with your beautiful plating. Thanks so much, chef. And don't let those ants run loose, eh? Okay. 100% the hardest part of the appetizer for me is the celery. I'm a little worried because it takes a lot of skill, which she has, to elevate such a humble vegetable as celery. Because the backbone of this dish is celery, and Andre's is lobster, I have to allocate a lot of time and love and care into this celery to make it the best celery the judges have ever had. If she can pull this thing off, she's gonna wow us. Hey, okay. Yeah! Celery looks good. Thank you, thank you. We are moving. Time is the most important ingredient in this kitchen. Jennifer, what's next? I'm gonna make a blue cheese mousse. Way to stay focused. You got it. I still have to do so many other components. Almost, almost, almost. My brain is just in this mode. Good job, Jennifer, good job! Next is Jennifer's appetizer. Fancy ants on a log made of pork poached figs, a celery brunoise, and a blue cheese mousse. She has taken a very childlike dish and elevate it to restaurant quality. I look at it and I can't wait to tuck into it. It seems almost simple in the beginning, but once you taste it, you realize the complexity, the fine detail, and the finesse to it. In there, you get so many complex textures. I get the crunch from the, the walnut and the celery. And then you have the blue cheese, full of flavor, but it's also balanced. It's very hard to balance blue cheese. There's so many different juxtapositions happening on this plate. It's a really, really smart dish. I mean, this is the kind of dish that you could see 
in, may I say, a Michelin-starred restaurant. This is just spectacular. When I tasted the lobster, I thought, how is a celery and blue cheese dish going to compete with a dish of Andre's caliber and quality? Any ingredient in the right hands can be sensational. Let's get back out there. Guys, good job, guys. Come on, come good on. Job. Boy, Andre. Okay, what's next? Lamb. <laughs> I'm making Mary's little lamb. This course is really different than the appetizer course. This course has a zillion elements. It's going to be lamb shanks with hay smoked oats, some sour cherries, some demi glace cherry glaze, and uh, some mint fleece. They all require a lot of time, effort, and care. It's game time. I think it's going to be worth it in the end. Jennifer is taking that childhood nursery rhyme and creating almost every element from that nursery rhyme in this dish. I am making a mint fleece for the lamb. To do this, I'm powdering some mint candies, and I'm going to make them into the cotton candy. That is going to be the minty element, which is a great condiment to have with lamb. Is she doing cotton candy in her dessert? Oh, or no, this is in this entree? dish. What? It's crazy. I want a nice little fleecy ball that almost looks like a cloud and will melt away when it touches the lamb. Anyway. I know how to do all these things, but time is of the essence. My oats, I am hay smoking right now. I just gotta do the next right thing. I feel like a lamb might want to eat some oats. <laughs> She's gotta be very careful with the smoking. Do not over smoke. It might impart a bitter finish to those oats. It's risky, but if it works, pure genius. Steel cut oats are amazing anyway, but with like the sneak attack of smoked taste, I think it'll be outrageously awesome. The smoke smells awesome. Thank you, thank you. Oh, my time, guys. Five minutes, five, five minutes. minutes. Keep going, keep going. What was that, Jennifer? A uh, red wine demi-glace. Wow. I'm gonna add some of that uh, sour cherry syrup to it. I am brushing these lamb bones with some of the glaze and wrapping them in copper foil. It's finale day, why wouldn't I? Two minutes, you only have two more minutes. I'm pretty close, I'm pretty close. It's looking good, bro, looking good. Watch your time. Go, Andre, go. How you doing, man? I think I'm doing well. What are you gonna do with the cabbage? The cabbage is what they're gonna eat it out of, so they're gonna wrap it and put it in the cabbage. Okay. One minute, you only have one more minute to Andre time. Look at those dishes. Wow. Oh, that looks so delicious. Thanks, guys. Nice, Jennifer. Oh, my God. Wow. Hey. You got it, buddy. Five, you got it. Eight, eight, seven, six, six four, five, four, three, two, one. And it's up. At the start of this, I thought this dish might be a bit impossible because there was just so many elements, but it did all come together. I just really hope they love it. Jennifer's entree is up first. It's a braised lamb shank served with hay-smoked oats sour cherry glaze, and a mint fleece. I always love a story in a dish. It evokes the sort of whimsy of that nursery rhyme. It is eye-catchingly colorful. And this right here, this mint fleece, it is so unusual, very smart. But the vegetables, for me, are really the star of the show. They're so complex. The carrots perfectly cooked. The oats with that smoke going through them. Sensational. I love that combination of meat, fruits, vegetables, starch, all coming together. And the thing is, everything fits. And then you got that plump cherry giving acidity, bit of that juice balancing with sweetness. And finally, I love that mint fleece. There is such a lot of detail in this dish. It's a really good one. Is that rice? Yeah, yeah. You're puffing the rice? Oh, that's so cool. Oh, nice. Jennifer's is doing a take on sugary breakfast cereal. I love breakfast cereal. Many a chef finish their night with a bowl of sugary cereal. It's more Saturday night than Saturday morning. Good. Puffy. If I'm going to serve the judges treat cereal in the finale, I better make sure that there's some good technique in that bowl. Let's see what happens here. I'm making a chocolate crumble, meringue marshmallows, a sugar-cured egg yolk, with a brulee, chocolate ganache, and tea smoked milk. 
Jennifer. Hello, Chef. Okay, How tell are me. You? You know, why tea smoked milk? Something that I think is so nice after a meal is a sweet and a tea. And I use my favorite tea, which is birthday cake flavored. I just think it pairs really well with this. You got a lot going, you got a lot of treats coming. I can't wait to taste this. Yes, Chef. How do you think of smoking milk? Oh, I don't, I don't know what happens in there, really. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I'm just flipping the sugar-cured egg yolks to make sure they all get enough time in the sugar. Putting it under the sugar, it creates a light skin around that egg yolk so it doesn't burst. I'm going to melt some sugar and do a little brulee on top of it for a bit of crunch. Nice. Woo! Looks great, Jennifer. Just to see Jennifer in her element doing what I've always known her capable of doing is amazing. Woo! One minute. You only have one more minute left. Come on, one minute. Come Let's on, go. Get it out. Come on, guys. Look how soft that ice cream is that Andre's scooping out. It looks gorgeous. Whoa, let's go. Wow. This just looked pretty incredible to me. Yes, Jennifer! 15 seconds! Finish strong, finish strong. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and up! Jennifer, please describe your dessert. Tonight, I've made one of my favorite dishes, treat cereal. There's a chocolate soil in the bottom. I've puffed a variety of different rices. I've made some marshmallow meringue. There's a chocolate ganache bed for the sugar-cured egg yolk. And I've tea-smoked milk. This isn't just a dessert. This is an experience. Oh. <laughs> wow. Jennifer, that first mouthful is a bit of a mystery as to what's in there. The second mouthful, it starts to define each flavor and texture. That subtlety of the smoke of the milk, that rich, complex flavor of the ganache, the texture of the puffed rice, there's something grown up about it. If there was one adjustment, one caveat, mm -hmm. I would like just a little more sweetness, but it really is. A tremendous dessert. Thank you, Chef. All these sweet cereals that I missed as a kid, the ones I crave, I recognize it all here. So my dream has come true, but in a sophisticated adult way. <gasps> Thank you, Chef. This dessert is absolute creativity. It's somebody who's really mastered technique, flavor. You can't teach this. This is one of the most original desserts I've ever had. Thank you, Chef. I kind of just wanted to give them some of the sense of wonder I have felt the entire time I was here. I'm just so happy. So I chose the passion fruit. I know passion fruit, and I understand the flavors of it, so I'm pretty confident. I would love to work with passion fruit. I love the sourness, the sweetness, all those different flavors coming together. But you have to be careful because it's very, very acidic, so it could be overpowering. So today I am making a scallop fritter with some seared scallop and sweet and spicy passion fruit glaze and a nice passion fruit uh, vinaigrette to go with the salad. My auntie Joan gave me a nice jolt of motivation, so I gotta stay in here as long as I can for her. Okay, lots of passion fruit in here. Sugar apple is delicious. It's really creamy, sweet. It's literally a custard. Rose bones. Hi there, Chrissy. Hello, chef. <laughs> so, Chrissy, remind me, which fruit did you get? Um, I got the sugar apple, and I have to go sweet. Sweet. So yes. tell me what the big plan is with your sugar apple. In. I'm going to be doing a tart, and it's going to have sugar apple puree. There's going to be caramelized pieces on top and a custard on the sides. I really, really, really want to make it about the sugar apple. So do you think this is a good opportunity for you to show off your baking skills? I do. I haven't done a whole lot of baking for you yet. And I do both. I bake as well as savory, so... So this may allow you to stand head and shoulders above the crowd. Who knows? I am hoping, yes. <laughs> Chrissy, from a strategic standpoint, yes. who would you like to see go home? You know, I know Jennifer and Andre are my biggest competition. Mm. And unfortunately, in order for me to get my dream, they have to go home. Well, this sounds like a very exciting dish. I look forward to trying it. Enjoy. Thank you. Thanks, Chrissy. <laughs> I am sweating. Well, that's dry. My dough was in the blast chiller for way too long. It's basically frozen. It's too cold. It is literally crumbling like sand in my hands. <laughs> if the base of my tart doesn't work, then I don't really have a tart. It's just going to kind of be a mushy mess. Ugh, I can't go home now. Uh... 
I'm a hot mess. Every time I try to roll this dough out, it's literally crumbling. Okay, so I just have to salvage it the best I can and make a small individual tart. Uh. I made a scallop fritter glazed with passion fruit and chilies and a fresh salad with passion fruit and vinaigrette. Well, I see color, I see refinement, and when I cut into it, I'm expecting to get something airy with a lot of flavor. I'm getting exactly all of that. Oh, it's crispy on the outside, fluffy, and tasty on the inside. The passion fruit has such a big punch of flavor. This is restaurant quality. Thank you very much. Wow, really delicious. I love that passion fruit that comes out. You really understand how all these flavors play with each other. It's very sophisticated. It's one of the best dishes we've seen this season. Oh, wow. Oh, I guess. I feel really great. I put all my creativity into this one plate. I got the sugar apple. I have done a sugar apple tart. So there's a sugar apple puree on the bottom. And then on top, I've caramelized some sugar apple and a creme anglaise on the side with a hint of cinnamon. So I am impressed with the presentation. Thank you, chef. I love these little pearls because it gives it a little bit of sophistication. But even beautiful tarts could be raw on the bottom. I'm hoping it's cooked through. <laughs> Let's have a look. I can see that it looks good. It could have done a teeny bit more time to get more caramelization. Wow. You definitely taste the sugar apple. It's creamy, it's smooth, delicate, and mildly sweet. You're very wise to keep the other elements to a minimum. Christy, you can bake. Thank you so much, Chef. Well done. Jennifer, it already smells amazing, I've got to tell you. <laughs> Thank you. This is a shrimp and corn tart. MasterChef Canada is such a spectacular leap from my day-to-day Ooh. I'm a policy analyst, and it has been safe, and it has been comfortable, but I have always loved food. There's this backlog of expression, especially through food, that needs to come out. I just know, like, my heart is going to ache mm. if I don't take some risks. I brought you here for a reason, because I think you have what it takes. Thank you, Chef Claudio. Wow, Jennifer, I am really intrigued by this, okay? Explain <laughs> how this is shrimp to me. I just really wanted to make it the hero of the dish in every way that I could, and then push it a little further. What you have is the shrimp and corn tart. I toasted the shells of the shrimp. I find it almost like a popcorn-y flavor, so that's why there's popcorn there to bring that out as well. This really is a unique and original dish. Thank you, chef. Very interesting. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Chef. Those judges have a pretty sick poker face. I don't know what they're thinking. I'm making root vegetables five ways with a balsamic glaze and a parsnip and yellow beet puree. I'm coming from a farm with my four kids hanging off my legs to the MasterChef Canada kitchen. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. Hi. The fact that you have this garden at home, you must eat a lot of vegetables. That's pretty much all we eat at home. Do the kids ever turn up their nose and say, no more oh, vegetables? of course, of course. I hide those veggies in everything. I'm very excited to see what you're gonna come I'm up with. I'm excited for you to try it. Come on, baby. Ah! I see all the beautiful colors, and I immediately think rainbow trout. I'm using a combination of different root vegetables, like radishes, beets, blue potato, and then a bit of leek to make a rainbow scale on top of the fish. The inspiration behind my dish is my dad. We would fish in the summertime for rainbow trout. And I remember my dad showing me how to get the bobber on the line. Fond memories. My dad died when I was 20. It was a mighty rip through the page of my life. And I wanted to do things that would be kind of safe. For a really long time, food felt like a risk. I now feel ready to do some risking. <laughs> That's the feeling. <laughs> this is turf and surf, a sweet potato puree, a beet puree, seasoned blanched vegetables. Underneath all of that, there is a rainbow trout poached in a flavored broth. 
This might be the first fish I've eaten where I like the scales. The fish is cooked perfectly. The root vegetables, they're definitely the star of the show. They really showcase those earthy, deep flavors. Overall, pretty amazing. Thanks. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Chef. It certainly is eye-catching. Beet is such a wonderful root vegetable to work with. What comes out is that earthy, slightly sweet flavor. And those root vegetables as part of the scales on top, maybe slightly under-seasoned. Okay. But if I had to score this dish on a scale of one to 10, I'd be giving it eight and a half. So well done, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. This is Vegetables Five Ways with a balsamic glaze and a parsnip, apple, and yellow beet puree. The plating is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. It really is a discovery of goodies. Great silky smooth puree. The sweet potato? Glazed maple sweet potato. I guess that gets the kids to eat them, right? Yeah. I put some hot spice on it, though. They don't like that at home. But the judge does. <laughs> That's great. How did you go about treating the lotus root? I just boiled down some beets, and then I pickled it just in the beet juice. It could have sat in that brine just a little bit longer, just to give a bit more of an acidic edge. I agree, yeah. But it's still crispy and flavorful. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Jenny, I like the way you separated the vegetables. I see the winters here. Celery egg, Swiss chard, sweet potatoes. On this side, you've got summer root vegetables, radish, beets. You know your vegetables. Sweet potatoes. Hmm. I like the balance, sweetness. Let me taste the pickles. Good crunch, got the acidity. Seeing a lot of techniques. Wonderful job. Thank you. Wow. I'm feeling really proud of myself. Like I belong here, maybe. I love you girls so much. Just keep stirring. Brown, 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 brown. As a kid, I loved eating bagels and cream cheese. It was something I ate almost every day. So here I'm doing a deconstructed lox and bagel with salmon tartare, a bagel twill, and cream cheese. I need to show the judges that I'm able to execute my out-of-the-box ideas. This time, I'm gonna finish on time in a composed manner, not like a crazy madman. <laughs> That's the dream, right? Hey, Josh. Chef, how are you? You know Becky, Josh. I do. I saw her last year. Congratulations. Thank you. You're working really clean, which is good, because when your station's in a mess, it's like your mind's in a mess. That's very true. Thank you. That was what you're doing. I'm gonna do my take on my Bubba's chocolate cake. We used to eat that stuff all the time growing up. I'm gonna put some ancho chili peppers in there just to give it a little bite. And I'm also gonna make some sponge toffee and a Saskatoon berry gel. This is the first time you have ever made something sweet in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. And it's for your grandmother, right? Yeah, it definitely is. I hope you do justice for her. Gonna definitely make her proud. Good luck. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Thanks, Becky. I'm taking a huge risk making this cake. I don't bake a whole lot, but I need to show the judges that I can do everything. 20 minutes! You only have 20 minutes left! Yikes! An hour just flies by way too fast. Oh no! Crap! Now I have to restart my vegetables. I do not have time for this. <sighs> They're all falling behind right now. Oh! oh, oh are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'm pouring sweat. I am moving lightning fast with 20 minutes left, and my wheels take almost exactly 20 minutes. Still too much. Wow, this batter's thick. This has to get done for the dish to even have a chance. <sighs> gotta crank it up. Slow it down. Slow it down. There we go. I got a million things going on in my head, and then I realized I forgot my gel in the blast chiller. I gotta go get my stuff. Oh no. It's frozen solid. Come on. I really needed this gel to elevate the cake. It's a disaster. It's not set, it's frozen solid. Now I gotta go to plan B. I add a liquid to it and I turn it into a coolie instead. I really hope this works out for me. Okay, that's good. Five minutes, you have five minutes left. A blast from the past. We want it in five minutes. There is less than five minutes to go and Mojin's trio is still in the oven. I just need to shape them, and hopefully it works out, but it's gonna be a last-second thing, I think. Whew. 
Kind of a little fluster, just coming down to the wire, trying to make sure everything's good to go. Two minutes! Two more minutes left! Get your plating done! No idea what I'm doing for plating. I want to get this advantage so bad. I'm going to crush it. One minute! You have one minute left! Oh, my God. We're going to do this on Come on. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! I am so excited. Hearing my name, I am absolutely stunned. I made a deconstructed lox and bagel with uh, salmon tartare and two kinds of whipped cream cheese, one tomato and one scallion, and a bagel wheel. I definitely get lox, cream cheese, and bagel. It's recognizable, but it's elevated. And this is what elevation is. See how it tastes. I like it. You cut the salmon very uniform. It gives it structure, and that is very wise. I think we're just starting to see you shine. Thank you, Chef. Great cracker. Lovely creaminess for that cheese. Definitely get the tomato, the onion, the dill, the capers. I think the salmon could have done just with a touch more seasoning and just a little bit more acidity. Today, you took a quantum leap forward. Thank you, Chef. Nicely done. Thank you. Walking away from the podium feels incredibly good because I feel like I'm finally finding my stride. <sighs> the final home cook we want to call up tempted us with a sweet memory. And that home cook is... Josh, please bring up your dish. I am super excited. You know, this dish means so much to me. It's my whole family on a plate. So I'm hoping that I've made my bubba proud. What I've made for you today is a Mexican chocolate cake with sponge toffee and a Saskatoon berry raspberry coulis. I really love the plating. It looks like this cake just fell onto the plate. Well, let's taste it. It's like a symphony of flavors happening in my mouth right now. The salt, the richness of the chocolate, the crunch of the toffee, that little bit of the heat that comes in in the back and just smashes you in the face. My advice to you is put perhaps a beautiful little quenelle of lime sorbet. That would just finish the whole thing. I just love it. It's a delicious, very sophisticated chocolate cake done in one hour. Incredible. I'm impressed. I get that richness coming from that moist chocolate cake. I get the icing, that chili, that sourness. Everything is in here. This is complex. And I want to say welcome to the competition. Thank you, Chef. Jennifer, how are you? Oh, hey, Chef Claudio. Tell me, what are you making for your sweet cheesecake? OK, my sweet cheesecake is a chocolate cheesecake. The inspiration is a walk through the forest. Some spruce tips there, I see. Yeah, yeah, I'm wow. just uh, in the process of candying them a bit. Beautiful. What are you doing for your savory? I'm doing a everything bagel with urban garlic cream cheese. So I've taken a pastry cutter and placed it in the middle. That sounds like a great concept. My only concern is time management. But if you can pull yes. this off, you are definitely one to watch. Thank you, Chef. Let's talk about the savory one. This is an everything bagel with urban garlic cream cheese cheesecake. Very original. Good on you for using that mold to create the hole in the middle of that bagel. Very, very ingenious. I actually quite like that. It really does have that bagel savoriness to it. The cheesecake itself has a very good Palette feel very, very creamy. Oh, yay. Well done, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer, can you remind me of your concept here? This is a chocolate cheesecake, and I try to incorporate a lot of earthy elements. Ooh, it's a bit under. Uh, uh, let's see how it tastes, though. This is really great. <laughs> Great control with all the textures. And those spruce tips blended really well with the richness of the cheesecake. Amazing. Thank you, Chef. 
Jennifer is eating up a lot of valuable time right now butchering her fish. This feels embarrassing to say, like as someone who comes from the East Coast, but I've literally never filleted a whole fish before. Hi there, Jennifer. <gasps> Hello, Chef Michael. <laughs> you got given the fish. Yes, I did. And you spent a fair bit of time removing the fillets. Yes, I did. I am making an ebi sudai carpaccio. I'm going to be deep frying the body as well and serving the carpaccio in the body. On the carcass? Yes, yes. That sounds a very interesting and uh, unique presentation. Do you think this could be a bit of a do-over after those fish cakes? Maybe. I'm excited for the opportunity to work with fish again. I love the positivity that you bring to every challenge. Thank you so Good much, luck, Chef. And use that time wisely. Yes, Chef. This abalone is very tough. It's like rubber. So I know I have to really break down its fibers, or else it's just going to stay rubbery. Chanel. Hi, Chef. So getting abalone yes. from Chrissy, do you think that was a gift, or was that something to maybe trip you up? I'll take it as a compliment that you wanted to give me a challenge. This is a very difficult ingredient to work with. You have to elevate it, make it shine. Yes. So tell me what the plan is. I really wanted to go Japanese, so I'm doing uh, sushi rice. I'm going to do uh, kale gomai, and then I'm going to do the panko crusted abalone. Hopefully, it'll be tender and tasty. Hopefully. Five minutes. OK, pal, one more dunk. I've never deep fried a fish carcass before, so I have no idea what I'm doing. And I am doing it just by eye. We'll see what happens. I tell you, if you're only serving the fish, there's nowhere to hide. This is, hands down, the most nervous that I've been, because it's a whole carcass on a plate. And that's all. This is an ebi sudai carpaccio, and I've made a sauce with some chili, lime, garlic, ginger, and cilantro, and I've served it in the fried body. Six seasons, I've never seen anything like this. That's a good thing. Oh, OK. Thank you, Chef. It's pretty amazing. The seasoning, it's just perfectly balanced. Wow. Last challenge, you struggled. This challenge, you're back in the game. You have incredible skill. Thank you so much, Chef. You know, you hit it on the spot. <sighs> the texture was perfect. The way that you preserve and reuse the carcass of this fish I am deeply touched. Because Asians don't like to waste anything. This is how we are so crazy rich. <laughs> now, you know in Asia, only the honor guests of the table gets to sink their teeth into this. The eyeballs. Today, I think the person to be honored is you. Are you sure? Yes. Thank you very much, Chef. You have certainly honored this beloved Asian ingredient. You did it justice. I'm touched. Thank you, Chef. There's a Michelin star Asian chef up there, and I'm bringing up this luxury ingredient Asian dish. I'm really hoping it's up to his standard. So I did a crispy sushi rice, a kale gomai, and then I did a panko abalone. The presentation, it's very neat. So abalone, it's a luxurious and beloved dish in Asia, especially Hong Kong. The cook has to be perfect. The abalone, you got it. Good! Perfectly seasoned and very tender. It's got that nice crunch. The sushi rice, that is almost perfect. <laughs> I actually think Chrissy wanted to throw you a curveball. <laughs> and you hit a home run. Thank you, Chef. I feel really good walking away from the tasting. I heard a home run from Chef Alvin, and that was pretty unbelievable to hear. So where the magic is at today. I got clove, cinnamon, and thyme. I've never used them all together. I pretty much never use cloves, and I never think about cloves other than apple cider at the Christmas market. So that's the first place my mind went, and I'm just going to run with it. I'm going to go dessert today. So I'm making a cinnamon creme patisserie and a clove creme leger, which I'm piping in a glass and a sweet thyme tuile to sit on the top. 
I've been trying to just really channel emotions and memories that feel special to me and then just run with that. And it seems to be working so far. So I really hope the judges like it. Let's do it. <laughs> Going very cool. I hope the judges can see that I took the challenge really seriously and that I wanted all three of these spices to be the hero of it. Tell me which McCormick gourmet spices you got in your box. I used ground cinnamon, ground clove, and also thyme leaves. I've made what I'm calling the winter holiday market. There's a cinnamon creme patissiere as well as a thyme tuile, and then just finished with a bit of smoke at the very end. It is a very poetic dish. And the presentation, just gorgeous to look at. It's all there. That little hit of smoke, the clove, the cinnamon, the thyme. It's not overpowering, but it is full and creamy and light. Yay. One tip would be to make that tuile just a shade thinner. OK. But overall, I like this dish. Thank you, Chef. Well done. Thank you. Well, I must say, when I look at this, it's simple but sophisticated. But what I say about taste? Taste is king. Wow. It's a very nice dish. It's executed well. This is like Christmas in a spoon. Thank you so much, Chef. Totally mission accomplished. I couldn't have hoped for anything better.